Good morning and welcome to Neighborhood. If you stay tuned, I'll be reading you this week's announcements on the day before Valentine's Day. On Mondays, come and sing with our spirit choir live and virtually over Zoom. You can get further details at music at nuuc.ca. Tuesdays, from 9.30 to 10.30, join in Coffee with the Minister. Reverend Wayne is there, the people who come by are there, and we talk about what's on our minds. Wednesday, you can support Club Sandwich by dropping off individually wrapped sandwiches at 112 Simpson Avenue, that's the MCC. You can do that Wednesdays before eight o'clock or Thursdays before noon. Again, Suzanne, music at nuc.ca, has more info if you need it. Wednesday evenings, there's meditation. You can join Reverend Wayne every Wednesday evening for an hour of guided meditation over Zoom. On Monday, February the 14th, two separate and joined events Songs of Exodus and Freedom with musicologist Jordan Kaplan, Clapman starts at 7.10 and goes for an hour. 
there'll be details on how to join in Monday's announcements. And then from 8.15 to 9.15, join us in a discussion about how to activate the eight principle. That's at our regular Sunday Zoom space and you all know how to get there or you wouldn't be hearing this announcement. Next Sunday, after our service, there's an investment update meeting. Uh, join us 1230 to two o'clock as we look at how our investments are doing and discuss issues around them. Thanks to Hala, we should all have our 2021 tax receipts, um, either for your neighborhood donations or for the gift in kind, which we mailed, mailed out the previous week. If you haven't received either of those receipts, and you should have, please contact HALA, office at nuuc.ca. The day after Valentine's Day is Broken Hearts Day to commemorate the homeless deaths, 3.6 per week in Toronto, 132 deaths last year. Join our C co-chairs, Nancy and Laura, at Nathan Phillips Square at noon to commemorate this tragedy, ongoing tragedy. There's a letter put out by the Interfaith Coalition to Fight Homelessness that has been signed both by our C committee and over 100 people altogether. And now we have a special announcement from our president, Allison. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Allison Kabayama, and I'm a member of the interim selection team, along with Helen Armstrong, Beata Hundert, Moira McDonald, and Gordon Thorne. And the team sent out uh, information, more information, to assist in understanding the difference between an interim minister and a settled minister, and um, you might want to check your email for that and previous communication. We are asking to hear also your opinions as to one, what are neighborhoods strengths? And secondly, what are neighborhoods weaknesses or growing edges? Please send your feedback to president at nuuc.ca. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Allison. Now this is something to rejoice about. On March the 13th, we'll have the first hybrid service of this year. And as of March 27th, we will start having weekly in-person Zoom hybrid services. That means you can either come into our sanctuary and be with us in person, or you can join us as you are now on Zoom. Both methods are open to everyone. And um, there'll be more details coming out over the next month as we get closer to that. So let's welcome each other into our space again. The question to the community for this week, and Wayne will be coming back to that, as will the breakout rooms. What do you do when the conversation gets heated? When the time comes, about a third of the way in, our minister will ask you to share. Next Sunday, the theme is you can't always get what you want. And out of my deep respect for you all, I won't try and sing that line. The service weaver will be Kurt Thompson, who can sing. And the speaker will be our own Reverend Wayne Walder. Music supplied by Suzanne and the Spirit Choir. Welcome to our Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Congregation Service. My name is Peter Marmerick. I'm your virtual service weaver this morning from my home, um, which is not in fact in front of Lake Ontario. That's just my background. We're recording this service so people can see it either on YouTube or on our website. Joys and concerns will be edited out. If you have privacy concerns, you can hide your face by turning off your camera and hide your name by renaming yourself. But now we have nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. 
While we can't quite yet bring our bodies together, we can braid our hearts, our minds, and our spirits together as we share greeting and gratitude for being with each other. This is our threshold moment, the moment we enter sacred space. Our service begins now. Each week we light our chalice and we hope you'll light your own personal chalice too. You may choose to hold your hands in the shape of a chalice, but either way, join our choir as we sing. We light this chalice to Now it's time for our prelude. Hilary Donaldson, who's our guest musician, and I'll introduce her more fully later on, will introduce the prelude. Hilary. Good morning, friends. It's such a pleasure to join you this morning. Uh, and it's a pleasure to share this video with you. This is a song that is uh, dear to my heart. Uh, it's one that uh, at our East End United Regional Ministry community is very familiar. Um, it's called Deep in Our Hearts, and it's written by uh, a former United Church minister named John Oldham, who um, I, I feel may have been a Unitarian at heart. Uh, his his prolific poetry attests to uh, just a really an openness to many of the themes that resonate with with uh, with Unitarianism. Uh, and uh, the the video you're going to see was recorded in my backyard uh, before East End had done any in person gatherings and certainly any in person singing uh, last September, I think. Uh, and you'll see myself, my parents, Andrew and Wendy, and in the back. Scott Pietrangelo, uh, our music leader, playing the keyboard in the in the background. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common. Thanks to all for that lovely song. 
I start today by acknowledging that the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations lived here before me and are living here now together with Métis and Inuit. Let us open our hearts to their experience at the hands of settlers and open our minds to their teachings about living in harmony. And I don't mean this in some kind of wishy-washy, idyllic, nostalgic sense. Both Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin were heavily influenced by the Haudenosaunee Confederacy when they crafted the US Constitution and system of government. Both held Unitarian views, so Unitarians have been learning from indigenous ways of living together for a long time. We're just carrying that tradition on. Our minister is the Reverend Wayne Walder, and Z. Getchell facilitates our Sunday child and caregiver program. Our musical director is Suzanne Mazars, who is off duty today, but instead Hilary Donaldson will be crafting the music for today's service. For eight years, Hilary was the pastoral musician at East End United Regional Ministry. Her approach to music ministry is informed by her work with organizations music that makes community and the hymn society. She currently teaches, writes, and parents from her basement in Little India and is a valued friend of this community. We also have Mike Kozowski impeccably doing the Zoom web hosting duties. Thank you to all of these people. By now, you all know Zoom etiquette. If you have a tech question or concern, send a direct chat message to Z. If you are visiting us for the first time, welcome. Please stay after service. You can go to a breakout room and chat with some congregants, or you can stay in the main room where you are now with our minister who can answer your questions about who we are and what we do here. Our mission at Neighborhood is to empower spiritual growth and shared action for the care of the world. Our theme for February is open house, and I don't think I'm giving away any secrets when I admit we chose that theme with a slightly different sense of how open our house would be at this time. As the fine old Yiddish saying puts it, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. That seems to apply whether or not one believes in God. But our theme today is open hearts, open minds. So I will talk about that. I suspect the open hearts part was partially chosen because tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. But keeping your heart open when you're in romantic love is the easy part. Keeping your heart open when you're alone and don't want to be Keeping your heart open when it's broken, that's the real challenge. The challenge of keeping an open heart when you're in pain starts in the mind. The world was one way and now it's another. We were in love and now that love has ended. We were married and our partner has died. And as I learned after Diana's death, the more we cling to wanting things to be as they were, the harder it is to heal. Adam Grant has a wonderful book I recently read called Think Again. It's about how we need to be constantly changing our minds and how much better our lives work when we do. This may be cruel, but if you haven't changed your mind on anything in the past year, are you sure you've learned anything? Grant says in the book, a hallmark of wisdom is knowing when it's time to abandon some of your most treasured tools and some of the most treasured, treasured parts of your identity. Four years ago, I needed to accept that I wasn't in the world where I was married to Diana. I was in a new world by myself. I needed to learn to survive in this new world with a new identity. I, I wish that had been as easy to do as it is to say, but for all of us, the world is changing. And Grant's book talks about how we need to adjust our beliefs and ideas all the time to get by. 
Certainly the past two years of the pandemic has given us all a graduate course in opening our minds to changes. And it is only with an open mind, accepting that the future will be different from the past, that we can dare to open our hearts. Open our hearts. That's the core of what I believe we need individually, as a congregation, and as a country. I read a meditation on this by Rabbi Arthur Green, an American Reconstructionist rabbi. This is what he said. That's what I pray for. That's how my prayers always begin. There's not much else to pray for. To remain open, to remain vulnerable, to be willing to live enough on the edge so that it stays right there. To feel the fullness and feel the presence. You have to have an open heart to do that. Open heart to be able to give it to others because others know when it comes from the heart. Now let's put that open heart into practice. Let's greet each other. Switch to gallery view, unmute your device, and offer a greeting to those around you. A chime will sound when we end. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi, Good Hello. Susan. Good morning. Pat. Dave. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Now join me in reading our opening words, which will appear on your screen. Let us cast the circle of a sacred space here. Let us cast the circle of a cherished space here. A space of safety, a place of forgiveness, a place of love. If we want the world to change, we must craft in our space and in ourselves the seeds that grow a different kind of life. A life of graciousness, of creative intelligence, a place of life and spirit for ourselves and our families. I wonder, this is a time when we can ask a question of each other. The question is, what do you do? How do you feel? How do you act when the room and the people in the room and the conversation gets heated? Often we have three responses that are built into our brain. We can run away, which is a pretty smart thing to do if we're feeling really uncomfortable. We can freeze as if an animal thinks, if we just don't move, everyone won't even see us. And the other thing we can do is we can fight. But there are probably some other things that we've done as human beings because we're such complex creatures. I wonder if you would tell us what happens to you when you walk into a room or you have that conversation with your family or when you're sitting at your desk at work or even on the subway and something happens and you feel the temperature rise, what do you do? Nancy, what do you do? Well, recent experience, I, I might cry out of frustration or not knowing what to say or do or anger or 
shame, many complex reactions, I might cry. Thank you so much. I've done those two. Beata, what do you do? Well, again, it depends totally if it's uh, a personal thing or uh, non-personal. But when it's personal, and like Nancy just had one, and they trigger you, oh, I'm learning to try not to engage, but it is so hard. So I'm learning to try not to engage, step back, breathe. Thank you, Beata. Hi, is that you, Kurt or Christina? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, usually, in the past, when things have gotten heated, I uh, I burst like a volcano. But I'm learning, still learning, and will probably continue to learn to step back and you know listen to what the other is saying as as hard as it is it's like i'm sure everyone it's a work in progress a long work in progress kurt thank you it really is a work in progress anyone else we have room for one else or time uh, yvette <laughs> oh hi I'm good sorry. morning um yeah, I think that, that, like others have said, I think, you know, I've been an advocate and a proud advocate for many, many years, and I can be quite loud um, to fight for injustices to vulnerable populations and peoples. Um, but the personal level, you know, in deciding that um, I'm not going to remain in situations where I'm just having to bite my tongue for hours and hours and hours, um, making that commitment to myself has meant that I'm needing to cut certain people out of my life. And, um, and that's a hard thing to do when you wish to make a certain commitment and uh, in order to follow through in truth and speaking your truth or living your truth, um, that requires you to cut out certain people, including family members. So um, after speaking my truth and then cutting them out of my life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Christina, did I cut you off there? Were you going to say something? I, I just said that I, I agree with Kurt, um, that I, I tend to um, I tend to step back from um, if the conversation is getting heated, I just sort of step back and just become a wallflower, you know, just remain, remain in the moment, you know, where this is going, but not necessarily participate. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for those reflections. Many of them are very familiar to me as well. And I invite you to uh, join me in this song that can help us achieve a, a sense of being rooted or grounded where we are, uh, whether that's wherever you find yourself or with the community you have found yourself in or that you've chosen. This song, Put Your Roots Down, uh, no one seems quite sure whose song it is, um, but uh, it's a, a staple of the Thrive Choir who are based in Oakland, California, a social justice uh, choir as well as uh, I was taught it by a, a good friend named Nehemiah Luckett, uh, who's a colleague through Music That Makes Community. So I believe you have the lyrics uh, somewhere and it's, put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing as you listen. For the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Are you listening? So this song is Call and Echo. I'll sing a line and you sing back the very same thing back to me. Uh, so I'll indicate, uh, but of course you can sing as long as you're muted, sing whenever you <laughs> care to, because we can all just uh, uh, sing to our own little circle where we are. So this is Put Your Roots Down. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Try that. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Let's do that one more time. 
Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Your turn. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. And I should have said, uh, my my parents are here in the background singing with me. If you're wondering where those disembodied voices are coming from, we have Andrew Donaldson and Wendy Donaldson off, off camera as well. So thank you for joining me, parents. Uh, that's the first line. Then the next line. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones. Just that much to try. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones. My turn. Is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Try that. Is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. And if you want, you can bend that same sound note for fun. Is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Let's try that second line. Is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones? Those two phrases go together. So let's put them together now because the sound of the river. Here we go. Because the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones last little phrase is are you listening your turn are you listening me again are you listening your turn are you listening call an echo here we go Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Your turn. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. My turn. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear the earth sing if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you Thanks, Hillary, so much for that. That was such an incredibly powerful song. Um, now is the time in our service where for the young and the young at heart to come up to the screen and have our time together. So come on up and get nice and close. So our topic today is open hearts and open minds. And as a group, we're going to practice exactly that. So let's start with the first part, open hearts. How does one practice opening your heart? 
Well, one of the easiest ways is to actively love someone or something. So I'd like you to practice that now. Go off and find something or someone that you love and give them or it a hug. Go on, I'll give you 30 seconds to go get a good hug and I'll stay here and sing about love. When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I can offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear and there is no one there to dry your tears I can hold you for a million years To make you feel my love So now that you're back, let's do a quick breathing exercise This is an old Sufi breathing tradition called element breaths they're a great way to open our hearts to the elements of the world around us, and I found them to be an excellent practice for opening both hearts and minds. There's four breaths and they go like this. I personally like to start with the uh, higher energy breaths and then move down to the more calm ones by the end. So we're gonna start with the air breaths. And air breaths are very simple. You breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth. Do that a few times, in through your mouth, feel a rush of the air as the wind enters your lungs, and then out through your mouth as you feel that wind being pushed free to travel off into the world. In through your mouth, as you feel the power and swirl of a tornado, out through your mouth. And that leads us next to the fire breath. In through the mouth and out through the nose. This is a very powerful breath. In through the mouth and out through the nose. Makes me feel like a dragon when I do this. Feel the heat and passion as you breathe in through the mouth and out through the nose. And then to calm that fire, we're going to do next the water breath as we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. As I do this, I'm picturing stream beds trickling water down the cracks in the street, breathing in through the mouth and picturing tiny drops of water filled with entire worlds of creatures far too small to see and out through the nose. Breathing in through the mouth. I feel connected to these worlds all around me. And breathe out through the nose. And then we come to the earth breaths to connect ourselves with the very rock and foundation of the earth around us. We breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. This breath is very solid and connects us to the mineral of the planet, the very essence of nature, in through the nose and out through the nose. And while solid and sure, it shifts and can adjust like sand and dirt, in through the nose and out through the nose. And one last time, in through the nose, and out through the nose. Oh, thank you for joining me in that. I don't know about you, but my heart feels nice and open after that. So now I think it's time to work on our minds, opening up our minds. So I find that one of the best ways to open up our minds is to activate both sides of it. Because the left side and the right side of our brains are in charge of different things, I find it good to work on both of those sides together. So we'll start with an exercise that might be familiar to you. Take your right hand and pat the top of your head. 
Now take your left hand and rub circles against your belly. It's all right if you're not quite getting it right. Just keep trying. You know, as people, sometimes we get things wrong and that can be hard for us. Sometimes we'll feel bad about ourselves or start to tell ourselves that we just can't do it. Sometimes we forget that there's often more than one way to do almost anything. And there's a whole bunch of people whose jobs are to try different things and get them wrong over and over again in different ways until they find something that works. They're called scientists. A scientist or someone like Adam Grant might tell you not to be sad if you get something wrong because you just discovered something. If this isn't working for you, you might try switching hands. Pat your head with your left hand and rub your belly with your right. Oh wait, I'm getting it wrong right now. It might make it easier for you or it might not. If that doesn't work, you could try slowing down because that might help as well. It still activates both sides of our mind. It still does the job we're, we're, we're wanting to do, just does it in a different way. And if it still doesn't work for you, don't feel bad. It can be a hard exercise. It took me years of practicing to be able to do it at all. There are other ways to open both sides of your mind. A lot of ways that I know of are ways that involve using both sides of your body together. You could take your elbows and touch your opposite knees, or even something as simple as just rubbing one arm with your opposite hand and really paying attention to that feeling, trying to not just feel your hand touching your arm, but your arm touching your hand at the same time. The important thing to remember when opening your mind is to be forgiving to yourself because we will get things wrong and that's okay. And these things that we've been working on today work together as well. Opening your heart makes it a lot easier to be forgiving to yourself when you're opening your mind. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully I was able to help you feel a little more open. Until next time, thank you for joining me. Hello, everyone. Trying to use our mind when we're upset is not always that easy. I wonder if you can think back, did you know that the jury system that we use in Canada and in many other places of the world was invented by the Greeks? There's evidence they invented the jury more than 500 years before the birth of Jesus. The story goes that Athena, the god of intellect and conflict, realized important decisions made by one person might not be fair. The person making an important decision could be angry or too kind. They could be interested in their own gain or not care about the community. Athena realized she could not trust herself to have an open mind and heart to make important decisions if she was emotional or reactive. To make her decisions better, she thought she needed the counsel of many people. So she asked 11 skilled and impartial people to help her make decisions. Athena and the 11 others, of course, became the 12 person jury. Together, they would make decisions about the fate of anyone brought before them. Athena hoped they would all have an open mind and heart while they made those decisions. <clears throat> This is a lovely myth, and while I don't believe there were gods on Mount Olympus, I believe the wisdom of this myth completely. Athena created the jury to help us make difficult decisions. It's a wonderful way for us to use our combined wisdom, intelligence, good-heartedness for growth and creativity. Our humanity imagined in the form of Athena, this form of social decision-making. Unfortunately, though, after 2,500 years, we're still struggling with how to make wise and equitable decisions and how to build public policy together. This is painfully evident as we struggle during conflict, both personally and socially. One side makes the compelling case, the other makes a dissenting case, maybe with a little more emotion, and those emotions rise, and before long, everyone watching can see there is no basis for agreement. And the next step is usually hiring lawyers. 
And we know that lawyers are often proxy conflict managers because we can't manage the conflict ourselves. We pass the responsibility for making difficult decisions to this role, and they come up with decisions we could have made for ourselves, maybe for free. Keeping an open mind and heart is not so easy. You can see this in the truck rally in Ottawa. Some people think that the Canadian army should be brought in to get rid of the white supremacists and their noisy trucks. Others think this is a grassroots movement of good, peaceful Canadians who are being marginalized because no one wants to have a real conversation about these challenging times. Media and policymakers did not want to talk to the protesters, and the protesters claim they don't want to talk to anyone either. This inability to talk is a huge problem. It's the opposite of open-mindedness and open-heartedness. If we cannot speak together, the alternatives are not good. The problem we have in Ottawa is not confined to one city. Every week for the past six months, these protests have been going on in cities across the world. In Ottawa, you know that one from even last two weeks. But they've been going on also in Vienna. Athens, Milan, Roma. Berlin. Montreal. And Paris. Paris had 160,000 people in the street just three months ago. I'm not sure about you, but my experience of being in business and in ministry has shown me that when people stop, stop talking because of a problem in a relationship, a business, or a country, one of three things happen. Number one, people end the relationship often doing damage on the way out. Number two is they escalate the conflict. And number three is they go silent and refuse to cooperate. Imagine any of these three with millions of people. Leaving and hitting back will bring a wave of populist governments, probably very right wing. Escalation means violence. It might lead to war. Freezing or going silent means we will grow a society that functions badly because people are opting out. Open minds and open hearts is more than a spiritual hobby right now. It's becoming an essential life skill. The vaccine mandate is one of the smaller issues we face. Climate change, financial, financial inequity, deteriorating infrastructure, identity politics, all require our best intellects and our openest hearts to work together for our mutual benefit because the ill effects of any one of these will hurt us all. If we cannot use our open minds and our open hearts to work together, life is going to get more difficult. Even in our congregation, our conflict got worse when people stopped talking. But you know this in your own lives. When you stop talking to your extended family, when you stop talking to the boss, your partner, or your friend, creativity and compromise and caring all die between us. It might be good to remember that we're not simply the people we have been waiting for. We are the only people we can wait for. And we have the resources to solve any problem we encounter. We are the ones who create the stories. We are the ones who invent the tools.
teach the knowledge, heal the broken. We are the co-creators of the universe. With open minds and hearts, it's possible to change things. And I have a couple more ideas in the other part. Thank you for listening. Thank you. This is a special time in our service when we invite you to share a joy or a concern in your life. In that case, we light a final candle for the joys, concerns, loves, and losses that remain unspoken in our hearts. Now I ask our minister to lead us in meditation. Wayne? I've asked Hillary to help do the meditation with me today. And, and I wonder if we can start by just being able to sit quietly, you know, like wherever you are, <clears throat> to be able to rest. Open my heart, open my heart, open my heart, open my heart. I believe we're all good people. I believe we all want to use our mind and our heart to make things better, to support our loved ones and even strangers we don't know. What stops you? What holds us back? Open my heart, open my heart, open my heart, open my heart. It's not complicated. Take a breath in. Feel your body. Wish someone well. Think of a way you could actually manifest that wish. Open my heart, open my heart, open my heart. 
go a little deeper. Can you let go of yourself just for a moment? Fall into your body. And take a breath again. Wish someone well. Open my heart. Open my heart. Open my heart. Open my heart. And if you can, Remember this. Remember how you felt. Remember how you wished. Remember the openness inside you, even if it's a tiny space. Open my heart, open my heart, open my heart, open my heart. And then it's over. Thank you, Hillary. You know, the notion of open minds and open hearts sounds so good and so sensible. But aren't you a bit wary of entering into a conflict with an open mind and an open heart? I don't know about you, but I'd be afraid of getting beat up or bullied. In a tense situation, only a fool or a saint walks into the fray with an open heart and an open mind. The reason a saint does it is because they have a secret skill. They have a space inside them we've been talking about and singing about and meditating about that allows them to keep their heart and their mind open. They have a moment where, instead of reacting and becoming defensive, they become peaceful and creative. They literally have a quiet space inside them that frees them to open their mind and their heart. Wouldn't it be easier to walk into a conflict if you had a skill like this? Most of us normal people react as soon as we feel frightened, as soon as we're angered or disagreed with. We don't even listen. Our brains are wired to do this. It's to protect ourselves and there's no blame. But if you or I could walk into a conflict and use our experience, our faith, our heart, and our intellect to help, maybe we would do it more often. Maybe it's not that hard to be a saint. But creating this space inside us takes practice, a saintly practice, and we owe it to each other to take it on. 
At Neighborhood, we have been trying this, and we try it with sayings and spiritual practice, circles of trust, harmonic song, rituals, even with elastic bands we've used on our wrist as reminders. And I have a more simple suggestion. When you or I go into a room of strife, could we remember the word be? Just be. Breathe. Then experience everyone in the room and everything around you. That's it. Breathe and experience. Breathe and look around. Experience that moment as deeply as you can. The B in B means breathe, and the E means experience, the place and the people. Now, after being for a moment, you might feel it's too dangerous to walk into that room, and you might choose to leave. But if you choose to enter the fray and be, breathe and experience the moment, your brain will have less reason to go into full defensive mode. The little space inside you allows you to be more open so you can think and feel and listen, maybe ask non-leading questions, maybe not just listen until the time it's your turn to talk. This little space inside makes it possible to laugh. And you heard in our wisdom from the community to cry. If we can be, there's 11 more people that will see us do it. And they'll feel in that reading from Peter, the heart of our doing it. And then maybe they can hold a non-reactive space too. And maybe they can access their full heart and mind. If one does it, it shows that others can do it too. And it starts by being. If we do that, we can bring our whole self. I have met saints, and this is what they do. When others see you do it, they're intrigued, and they might try it too. And we become the group that can help make the good decisions Athena was looking for. You know, there's a lot of research about this. Daniel Kahneman won the Nobel Prize for his work with human bias. He did a study of doctors and judges and teachers who made decisions. He was able to demonstrate that these professionals made wildly different decisions in very similar situations. When their mood or the, the environment around them was disharmony, in disharmony. Khan found when decision makers were rattled, they made different and sometimes terrible decisions. And this is how we all do it. If we feel threatened or pressured, we make decisions far worse than we would if we were being. You probably know the musician Daryl Davis, who speaks with Ku Klux Klan members. He does it to lessen fear and learn how to respect each other. You know, he went into the rallies and just breathed and experience them. He handled his fear by breathing and listening. Unbelievable. He did not try to do anything. And the result was that the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan gave Daryl his robes as he left the organization. We don't have to think alike to love alike, say our saintly UU ancestors, Francis David and Michael Servetus. These UU saints knew the power of an open heart and open mind to grow communities, culture, and people. We are the result, the testament of their open mind and heart. If we want to think again as Peter encouraged, 
If we want to asset frame, as I encouraged us last week, if we want to manage our bias and use our experience, we have to keep our mind and heart open. Problems are big. It is simple, but not easy. When you enter a room with those difficult people, remember they need a saint, frankly. So just be. Breathe and experience what's going on. Open yourself to your experience and goodness. Athena knew this, which is saying, we all know this. If we can be in the room of strife, in our homes, in our offices, in our communities, and not react, then we can gather others, the jury, to help us build community, make decisions that are tough, and help us build a community. We can make it easier. If it were not for this imperfect skill in my life during the conflict among all of us, I would not be standing here today. So be a saint. I mean it. Find others in the room who might open their hearts and minds. Sit with them, support them, let them see you. Listen, let them support you as you support them. I know you can. <laughs> We're counting on you. Thank you for listening. In these times of separation, we need to come together. We all want communal support. I believe that's what brings us all here. But the law of conservation of energy says we need to put back as much as we take out. Many of us do that through the work we do for neighborhood. But we need to support our community through putting financial energy in too. Maybe that's an e-transfer or a check when you think of it. With a recurring gift though, you don't need to keep remembering. So much easier. Z has pasted a link in your chat window for you now, and Hillary will play music while you click on it and go to our donation page. We will now pause. What we need is here. What we need is here. What we Join me in the closing song, which you've heard earlier in the gathering today, John Oldham's Deep in Our Hearts. And I'm so delighted to have uh, Andrew and Wendy Donaldson uh, joining me in singing and playing this song and uh, equally delighted to have gathered with you today. So thank you so much for having us. There is 
Thank you, Hillary and family, for providing us with music today. Now I invite you to sing with our choir as we extinguish our chalice. <laughs> I bless you and I with the courage to walk into that room where we know it won't be easy and to allow us to open our minds and hearts for ourselves and all others. Bless you, bless you, bless you. For those of you who do not wish to join a breakout room, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone who remains today will be asked to join a breakout room. Today's question to consider in the breakout room is, what do you do when the conversation gets heated? And you might even consider, what might you do differently? If you're new to neighborhood, just stay in the meeting by saying later if you want to ask me a question about our community or about something that happened today in the service. Um, otherwise, join with others to see if you can get some commonality with your community. We end our service by going to gallery view, if you're willing, and unmuting ourselves. There are many things you could do, and I'm sure you can do any of them. But what we've been doing is holding our hands together and saying namaste to each other. It means I salute the spirit within you. Namaste. 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 Safe paths. Namaste. 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 Namaste.